everybody, it's Kuba, and we have finally gotten our very first look at some actual gameplay of Dragon Ball Fighters. So what I'm going to be doing is pretty much breaking down this gameplay session and giving you guys my overall thoughts. So with that being said, let's get right into it. First things first, opening sequences are back. Now in the Xenoverse series, they were in, however they were really bland or stagnant if you will, because it just showed you the front of the character, they probably said a quote or nothing at all, then the camera flowed behind them and that was it. And the worst thing about it is, it was the exact same thing for every single character. Whereas in Dragon Ball Fighters, that is not the case because you can clearly see in this gameplay session, Cell powers up and then says something to Goku and then Goku turns into Super Saiyan, but he turns into Super Saiyan exactly like how he did at the ending of the Dragon Ball Z openings. And then he says something back to Cell and then we get right into the action. That is nice because although in this particular case we only see for Cell and Goku, it's diverse for all of the characters. So I'm glad that they took the time to bring back these unique sequences instead of having all of them being the exact same thing. Immediately upon the start of battle, we do see assist characters being utilized. Now of course we've already known about this since the game got leaked, but it is cool just to see it in action. However, there is one thing that I picked up on and that is the fact that your assist characters can in fact take damage. And here's why that's so important. Now, of course, we know that this is a 3v3 system. However, you can either throw an assist character or swap out characters mid battle. So let's say that you're using Goku and you throw out Vegeta as an assist character. However, the opponent manages to hit Vegeta and he loses, let's say 10% of health. If Goku dies or you manage to switch Vegeta into the fray, he will start off the battle with 90% health. And of course, in a traditional fighter, you want to make sure that all of your characters have as much health as possible because you don't want to start the battle or continue the battle with a disadvantage. So it's cool, but you gotta be careful when you're throwing out assist characters. The next thing is the fact that this game has no flight in it whatsoever. Although there is a rush feature that allows you to knock your opponent in mid air and then you can follow up with a juggle attack in mid air. So I think that's cool because for the most part, it keeps the game grounded because we don't want to have to worry about, I guess, two levels of where you have to attack your opponent either on the ground or floating in mid air. The rush feature is a good balance between that. So you still get that feeling of aerial combat, but not being stuck in mid air you have to knock your opponent in the air juggle them around but then eventually they will fall and you will fall as well so it's good that they're keeping this game grounded this next one really isn't a big thing but of course in a 3v3 battle system you are able to swap out your characters mid battle so that's really cool however i do still want to see if you're able to swap out your characters mid combo because that could lead to some amazing combos again we would need more information on the game but still, of course, you can in fact swap out your characters mid battle. The next thing I want to talk about are the ultimate attacks. Now, before I even get to the main point, I just want to say real quick that these ultimate attacks look phenomenal. Like, let's be honest, we haven't really had a Dragon Ball game that has really captured the essence of these moves similarly to the anime. And I think that these guys, Arc System Works, really nailed it. So, again, my personal thoughts, they look phenomenal but back on point the thing about these ultimate attacks are they seem to be exactly like the instant kill system now if you guys don't know arc system works actually make the guilty gear series and within that series they have this feature called instant kill and it does exactly what it says it's their variation of the ultimate attack however if you get hit by it you automatically die however although it's that powerful they are not easy to land so that's exactly what it seems like in this gameplay session because Boo literally had to try to string a combo together and knock Vegeta in mid-air to string together Angry Explosion, which was the instant kill. So I really like where they're going with this. It doesn't seem like you could just spam moves all day and of course you would probably get a hit off. No, you would actually have to combo into it to try to land it on your opponent. One thing I really like about this game is the fact that there is environmental destruction as well as complete stage destruction. Now in this video, you guys will be able to see the stage destruction. However, I did see in another video the environmental destruction. It was a battle between Team Gohan and Cell on the world tournament stage. 
and within that stage, if you shot a Key Blast on the ground, or if a character hit the ground hard, the tiles on the stage would crack and then eventually break. It's small aesthetic touches like that that really make it seem like you're in a heated battle. It's not just stagnant, boring, or whatever the case may be. No, if you're fighting to the death, you are literally fighting to the death and everything around you is collateral damage. That is a very, very nice touch. This next one is a big one and it is the fact that if you utilize three of the energy gauge, Frieza can transform into Golden Frieza during battle. Now, I'm not sure if this will translate to all the other characters that can transform. However, for now, we do know that Golden Frieza is a possibility during battle. Now, I see this as a risk reward type scenario because the good thing is when you transform, of course, you're slightly faster and you're much stronger. However, the downside is, or at least for Frieza specifically, he will revert back to final form after a certain period of time. And within that scenario, there are two seconds where he's completely wide open for a counterattack. One when he's kneeled down and the other when he falls down. So it's a risk reward type scenario where you might want to use the transformation if you're close to victory. But if you don't clench that victory, you are wide open for a combo. So be careful when you use the transformation. The next thing is if you throw out a super attack, your assist character can hop in as well and throw out another super attack. Now, in this particular scenario, we see Goku throw out a Super Kamehameha towards Frieza. And let's say that he managed to jump in the air and avoid that attack. If he threw out Team Gohan, he would fire a Super Kamehameha in the air as an anti-air attack, which then will catch Frieza. But even if it slightly misses, if Frieza starts falling down, he would still get caught in Goku's Super Kamehameha. So it's a really cool feature to add to, I guess, add more pressure onto your opponent. And the last thing is the fact that ending scenes are back. Now, once again, that was also in the Xenoverse series. However, it was really bland. It was really stale. It was boring. However, in this game, that's not the case because with this specific ending scene that we see with Goku, that is the thumbs up that he threw towards Vegeta after he defeated Kid Buu. So again, it's nice to have this type of diversity, this type of uniqueness back in Dragon Ball games because they haven't been in for a while and I don't know why they weren't in the Xenoverse series, but in Dragon Ball Fighters, they're back and it's nice to have them back. My overall thoughts are the fact that this game is really unique and pretty much one in one with the anime because they're really trying to capture that essence and put it into video game form, which I find extremely interesting. And the fact that it's a competitive Dragon Ball Z game. Note that this is the first ever official competitive Dragon Ball Z game. We are in the generation where we get to play such a game like this, which is awesome because I have been begging for a game like this for years now because you can be competitive in any of the other Dragon Ball Z games. That's true. Like any game you can be competitive in, whereas this game is designed around that competitive nature where it could go to EVO, where it could be at Apex, where it could be at these major tournaments. That's the type of game that this is. And with everything that I've stated, it's definitely a possibility. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. But with that being said, that's going to be the end of this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Of course, if you did, please like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at IndacoopaYT. And if you want to stay updated for all the videos I upload, don't forget to ring my bell. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys later.